Hi, welcome to Parametric House. Uh, in this Grasshopper tutorial, I want to convert a surface uh, into a mesh by a series of connecting columns. So, for example, if I select the surface, we can control the location of the columns easily, as you can see here, which I'm going to explain. Then we're going to project them on the ground uh, for the mesh we're going to delete. And as you can see here, we can change their location, which I'm going to explain how you can move these columns around. After defining the location of the columns, which we can just move around uh, the surface, as you can see here, we can convert that mesh into the millipede finite element solver, find the deflection. As you can see, here, this is like 40 centimeters. We can see the deflection which is going to be these two parts. So maybe we can add two columns here to even decrease that deflection more. So as you can see here, I have also added these two columns. Again, I can move them and give them different alignment. So for example, for the second column, I can also bring that a little bit out. I can also change the scale on the ground. Another thing I've added is a scaling for these columns at the bottom. So as you can see here, if I increase the scale, maybe we want to make this uh, column bigger and these columns smaller. I again convert that, that into a millipede mesh. Here you can see that's like 16 centimeter, which is a really high decrease of the deflection. So you can use this method to design a surface with a series of columns with structural optimization form for the final results. Okay, let's get started from scratch and learn this step by step. Uh, so first what I want to do is to define a surface in Rhino. So you can just make any surface you want. For this example, I can just draw a rectangular surface. Uh, I usually use this technique, which is uh, rebuilding the surface into a more UV uh, isocurves and then use the soft edit surface to deform that surface. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is that it, this is like the fastest way you can make a NURBS surface in Rhino and deform it so you just have a free form so you can check out your algorithm. Uh, does it work or not? Okay, after producing the surface, we can go to the params menu, geometry and pick up the surface and right click and set this to the surface. Uh, we can also internalize that if we don't want to change the surface anymore and we just want to work with it in Grasshopper. Uh, the first thing we want to do is to define uh, the point attractors, which is going to define the columns. So I'm going to go to the surface, uh, evaluate surface, and let me just put this to full names. Give the surface to the surface input, right click and reparameterize uh, because what we want to do here is that for the U, we want to make it like uh, from zero to one and for the V, it's also going to be from uh, zero to one. So remember that this reparameterizing is really important and now you can just give an MD slider, uh, which is a really fast way of defining uh, UV count uh, or UV coordinates to the point. So we can just define that from 0, 0 to maybe 1, 1. Uh, for example, if I'm looking at this from this viewport and I'm just working like here, you can see that this is going to be 0, 0, this is going to be 1, 1, and all the corners I want. So let's just uh, define four points. For example, Control C, Control V use the shift key to add it to a point and maybe define another one. And maybe we could just have three columns for this example. So I'm going to also put it here. Okay, now that we have defined uh, the value at surface and extracted the points, uh, we want to delete the mesh faces. Let me explain here. Uh, we can go to the mesh utility and define a mesh surface, especially when we have a NURBS surface. A good thing about this is that you can define a UV count. So I can hit Control M or go to display and preview mesh edges. So I can see that. Let me turn off the surface and define how many UV counts I want. So for example, I can say from three to 30 and delete the title and give it to the U count and control C, control V to V count. Now we can just control the number of mesh faces we want. And this is going to be the base mesh we have. Okay, now I'm going to talk about how we can delete these mesh faces, okay? For example, for your project, you want to 
uh, get rid of those faces and then bring the columns down. Uh, to do that, we can go to the mesh utility and we need a, something called delete faces and we need the index of those faces we want to delete. And how can we find them it is really easy. What you have to do is to go to mesh and use this face normals. And as you can see here, it's going to give you all of the centers uh, for that uh, face. And now we can bring those points here. And we also have the centers here. Okay, so we have two bunch of curves. Uh, one is the center of the faces of the mesh and uh, one is the point attractors or the columns location, whatever we can call it. Uh, now you can use a tool called CP point. You can find it also in vector point closest point here. And uh, the points which are searching here, we have the point searching and the cloud we want to find the nearest point. So here we say that these point attractors are searching uh, among the center of the faces and we want the closest point. It's going to snap to it, which is really great. And also it's going to give you the index of the faces. So I just can give that to the index. And now if I just bring it here, we can uh, turn off these here. And this is going to be a really good way of deleting a mesh faces. Okay, so as you can see here, we can easily delete. And also you can decrease the number of faces if you want bigger holes inside it. So for example, if we want to go to the corners, we Okay, so we have those four corners now, uh, we have deleted that. The next part we want to do is to get the mesh border. Uh, we can do that by going to the mesh and getting the face borders. And by using the set list item, which is for selecting, we can select the same index we want. So this is another way of selecting the face border, which is really important. And this is like the first part. Now that we have them, we want to project them on the ground and make the columns. So what I want to do here is to define a direction uh, on this uh, face. So for example, I can say that I want to project it down here on the XY plane, or I just want to define a direction. Right, like this. Uh, 